Hmm. I hope that doesn't awaken anything in me. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, this has been an interesting turn in my channel content. We're going to be playing a dating sim today, and it's the one released by KFC called I Love You, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> um, I feel absolutely ridiculous playing this game, and um, this goes without saying that I'm not being sponsored by KFC to play this game. I'm simply playing it for the meme. So, <laughs> let's just start a new game. <laughs> Oh, good gravy. Welcome, chef. Tell us your name. Well, obviously, I have to go. Crisp Owl. Has to be. Has to be. Chef Crisp Owl. Absolutely. Ooh. You see... <laughs> oh, do I have to do a voice? <clears throat> you sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest tunit apartment. <laughs> oh my gosh. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in! Oh, what should I do? Nah, let's do it. We're keen. We're hell keen. Smack that clock! Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. <laughs> I can't take this seriously, oh my gosh. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. Uh, let's daydream a bit. I mean, we've smacked that clock and now we're just keen. It's here, finally! Your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities. When you realise you're running late, you grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Yikes! You're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. I think we made a mistake, guys. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Um, let, let's give it a go. Good morning, Chris <laughs> I'm not doing her voice. Hell no. A actually, I'm... Is that your am? <laughs> oh my gosh. Come on, I can do this. What's the... It's just that... This morning, I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> but for University of Cooking School Academy of Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <laughs> Look, I'd do the same. <clears throat> Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some release? Release? Oh god! Uh, relief! Oh no, that's not even- Okay, let's, um... Ahem! <clears throat> uh... Uh... Let's- Let's cheer her up. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Hmm... The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know, she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with a fancy looking towel? And the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. 
and I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have this killer pain. <laughs> can you believe I got them myself? Yes. Yes, you can definitely believe it. <laughs> I, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Um. Oh, I didn't see you there. Ch Chicken shins? I'd believe that, actually. <laughs> Have you seen my legs? They are not perfectly normal shins. I skip leg day every day. <laughs> Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <coughs> Van Van? <laughs> you Is your ring ring? <laughs> You've never been sure what their arrangement is. But as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they'd just hand us our diplomas now? Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time, there's just not time, to properly tell these two off. Eh, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Uh, psh. See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. <laughs> I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but... I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Chris Bow. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable! Now, now! <laughs> huh? What voice would he have? <clears throat> now, now. Quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup? And why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, Head Instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun with these voices. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere. 
wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Please, someone close the door. And then, he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <gasps> it's him. It's... I don't know how Colonel Sanders will sound. If it isn't my favourite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. S sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Hmm... How could I voice Colonel Sanders? <clears throat> Please, call me... No. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's a southern accent. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> a hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your... <laughs> Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Oh, and this over here must be Sweaty Sweat a lot. Maybe we should open that window back up before Fawcett Pit melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on a second. Nobody talked to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We're in the same kindergarten class. And what is it with all your really weird insults? Besides, when Chris Bow sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> oh, you turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Look, let's let's be modest. Let's be, you know, a, a, a cute anime girl and be like, ah, Let's take the handkerchief. You stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it to your face. But when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. <laughs> he smells like chicken. Jinkies. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss QUIET! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school, with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I I'm... Uh you're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students, that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <coughs> The class bursts into laughter. 
Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Oh, well, being in a culinary school and Colonel Sanders, we have, to, we have to do a chicken snack. Surely, surely. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favourite! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Aww. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay them no mind. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavours on them at all times. Take that lesson, kids. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Chris Bell, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh, what will I choose? Look. Uh, oh, I'm shy. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to sit next to my best friend. You move to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality. And there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say. But now that Miriam mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. Jeez. Oh! Look, if you could see my face right now, and I'm glad I don't have face cam, but my face is just cringed. <laughs> As soon as you settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz! Yay! A quiz about me? This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Oh, extremely looking at you, pop. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Oh, let's, let's blow the professor away with our absolutely high IQ answers. Feather. Has to be. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Oh, look, he was like, raise your sporks. So let's let's do a let's do a um tailored answer to him. A spork. That's right. Oh boy, we are geniuses, guys. What food is best for a broken heart? Oh, oh. Now this is a tricky one. Camel meat is high on that list, isn't it? Um, we could go with the cliche answer. Look, let's do a silly face. Because, you know, that's made with love and not too much salt. And camel meat, I mean, you could salt the hell out of that. That's wrong! Is Sprinkles a good boy? Oh, absolutely. He's the best boy. Oh, absolutely. He is the best boy. Four out of five. Look, it was worth it doing the pancake silly face. I'd rather, you know, kind of play it cool. You know, I don't want to be an A student, but, you know, I can, you know, settle for 
a distinction. <laughs> Only one wrong? Not too shabby. You might just do all right, kid. You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He nods with approval. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow! The cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? It must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. Y y you see, I, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh! Lunch, lunch, lunch! She said shh! In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell... You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but where the room is true... Is this! Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating! For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What do you think? What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Sure! <laughs> nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison! Ha! <laughs> Got him! He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up. She suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, uh, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. That cow! Mm. Oh, please. Hmm. Well, Van Van the Man Man. If you don't want any, I'll take his. Oh, wait, that's me. I'll take his. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and you sink your teeth into it. <laughs> it's amazing! Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Ooh, what do we want to do? We can try and identify the flavours. Are we going to go into this fantasy world? Are we going to savour this moment? Look, he might be impressed if we try and identify the flavours. Yeah, let's do it. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinising every flavour. Salt, maybe? Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? 
Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still, until you find it. Could it be? So do you know? <laughs> he really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use. <laughs> you try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret. And yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try and get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Okay. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, uh, 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 I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I've had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own I'd be willing to trade. <laughs> What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Oh, You got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers, Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... But it's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow! You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And... Oh, definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. <laughs> I dare say, the biggest. I'll leave my mark on this world, you can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personali personality. Oh my gosh, I can't even speak, that's my personality. Um. Strength? Wow, him with a big idea. Add additional... Nah. No more than 11 herbs and spices. That's what he said. Be modest but thoughtful. Yeah, let's do that. Let's be modest. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory and peppery. It, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Crisp Owl. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. <laughs> we should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a second. Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything. <sighs> Except... <laughs> Except maybe kisses to the crowds of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena! 
For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A, a, a team of two, that is. A, a, me, me and you, if, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, Chris Pal, I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. <laughs> oh my, two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. <laughs> who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Oh, it's got to be Clank. Absolutely Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Gingies. Maybe I should shake my panel loose sometime. <laughs> Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. Uh, you get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, look. KFC and their potato and gravy. Maybe he'll add some cheeky um, spices to it. So, yeah, absolutely. Potato and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man! Did someone call for me? Ugh. No, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Crispal's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arm full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Chris Powell was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you'll be able to get up to my level. Ha! Doubt it! Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. <sighs> but Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you then. This thing that has positioned yourself at your station. Don't you feel, deep down, that we cast complementary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. 
just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Oh, man. Miriam might be busy with Clank. I don't really want to bother her. Nah. Senpai, help me! I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Chris Powell as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Chris Powell's talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature! You look down at your station and realize, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds out a spork to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Ah! Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realises that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Chris Bow. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes first? Van Van rushes over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce, plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. I may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It's been eaten. I uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Whoopsie! Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, 
disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back into reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, um, hello! I've just uh, turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I, I, I just want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I, I didn't even realise I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Chris Bow. There's something I need to tell you. Aha! Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them, like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I, you, shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of this story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him! We're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero! The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. <sighs> I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me! Just I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? Oh, hell yeah! Um, look. Let's defend. You decide to defend. Let's see what he does. Trepidation! Hell yeah! You close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Fat lot of good that defense did. Well, let's go then. You decide to go on the attack. Oh. Do we eat? Nah, he looks like poisonous. I don't know, man. Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself! They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? They go on the attack. Let's cook with more love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork Monster use utility tensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Oh gosh. Oh no, what do I do? Um... Uh, uh, am I ready for this? No, let's keep going. Let's go. Cook with love. Let's do it. Spork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge! 
Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens! Pot Pie Power Pinch! Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage! Spork Monster is defeated! You, you saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Uh... Nah, absolutely not. Forget! No student will ever walk the quad in fear again! This monster messed with the wrong chef! Attack! You'll never survive my student death loan destruction! <laughs> Spork monster is completely vaporized! Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. You continue to surprise me, Crisp Owl. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Thank you, senpai. Good night, my colonel. <laughs> in your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. W were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders' cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used... <laughs> and then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. <laughs> you meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I, I think I might be... Um, I think I might like Clank. Oh my god, girl! You like Clank. Like him? Like, like, like? I, I know. It sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like him, like him. Wow. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? Wow. No, but... That does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming for it. What? Uh, okay. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's weird. <laughs> Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy. Like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy of Learning? You're a thing now? <laughs> yeah, we're a thing. We definitely connected yesterday. I mean, not to, not to boast or anything. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Oh, absolutely. Look at me. I am just 
the the I don't know what I have. <laughs> Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. Damn right I'm great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you already know a secret ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. It's cha. Your bestie's eyes light up. Hmm. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. <laughs> That's... That sounds a bit familiar. <laughs> this can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. Oh no! How did you get that through customs, girl? He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me. And the flavour was like anything I ever tasted. Oh boy. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it would be much use to anyone. <coughs> please, please, please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. Oh, look, if if I tell her, she might tell someone else, and then, uh, look, I don't want to lose Colonel Sanders' trust, and she is my best friend. I mean, uh, oh, what do you do? What do you do? Um, let's, uh, I'm sorry, Miriam, I'm really sorry. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name, I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know, it sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow! Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing. And you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Um, let's not be like too needy. Let's just stand back and just admire from a distance. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. <laughs> Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently, like me most of this playthrough. Oh, I didn't realise anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but... The words don't come out exactly right. Uh, what a horseful beaut you have. I mean, what what a horseful beaut you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempt. Uh, being a good friend. Wow, I'm lost for words. Look at that. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Chris Power just gets really nervous around people they like. Oh, you cow! You ratted me out, you bitch. 
What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. What? She gives you a wink and a smile, as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like, counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad! You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming! Well there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh, why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Honey? Yeah, let's be passive. This is like... They're, they're, yeah, let's just be passive. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? Damn right I'm the emperor of cooking. Ugh. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders! These crazed men are about to come to blows, and they think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelids She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spend the morning chasing a car all around town and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. She can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Chris Powell? Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. 
Which item do you want to sample? Um, let's see. Shimmering pepper, but it could be really hot and then you embarrass yourself. A glass of water or a dog biscuit. Nah, let's see. Let's get the cojones. Let's eat the pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend. <laughs> this guy again? I'm here to give you an important message. <laughs> you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> so sorry. I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine. I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> their prophecy! <coughs> you must... You feel... <laughs> oh man, that killed me. Oh, you feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man! You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, maybe I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim and your rivals entered to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. We don't got time for their stuff. Is everything a competition with you two? Mm. Yes. Yes. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn, to love, to learn to love? Sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. Uh. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. Chris Bow, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Oh, thanks, Miriam. What a doll. What's a gift? Oh my gosh. It's her cute tiny food. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down and a tartlet for dessert. Oh, that was great. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle! Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sporting court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least... Not until we turn on the timer! Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, words, timer ready! That's what I'm talking about! I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get! My bestie can best the best of them! Thanks, Miriam. Best believe it! Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast, if the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does the water boil at? Oh, 100 degrees. That's right. 
But how would you have ever gotten into the school without knowing that? Well, look, I'm a master chef. Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. Absolutely, Professor Dog. I am there, Professor Dog. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? Ah, ah, ah. That's right, you might not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies! Ah. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Oh my gosh, what state of mind? Trust! Ah. No! I'm begging you to get it together! Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. Next question. <laughs> Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does that come from? Small town where big dreams are born. That's right, this is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Arr! You try and shut out of the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Ah, oh, absolutely, it's sizzling. No, it's not. Oh no. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question, damn it. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Chris Bow. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now, all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoons full of gravy will it take to... Oh no! What was I thinking? Get my mind back into the competition! Oh no, I'm losing it! You're stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk! Oh, I know, right? Oh. You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind! Sorry, I forgot the question! Uh, walking, exchanging witty vows! What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? <gasps> You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun planning elements of her dish. It's colourful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. <sighs> no! No! I know you'll have nothing more than seeing your fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Chris Powell does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. <gasps> oh, I'm hitting some octaves today. Jinkies. But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Sweetheart, uh-huh. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default? No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on the account of Chris Bow's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Chris Powell to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this cream out of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. 
Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his moustache. Back off, ho. This is my man. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm feeling jealous now. I've got a sore hand. But I, I don't have the energy. I'm just sore. I, I'll just internalise it. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash and they fall off your face. Which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by a poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. Uh, we should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to feel your fr- <laughs> I'm not fit to feel your fryer. <laughs> I'll never be a master chef. Oh, whew, okay. Failure is a part of life. He's English now. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I mean. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful. Motivated. Well, handsome, sure. <laughs> I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I, I, I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I've resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders has changed his focus, as Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire... I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster! Coco, the 
last Pokemon star is here to fight a hero. Hmm. Is anyone else feeling a bit of deja vu? I'm sorry, Gorko, but I could have sworn we already battled you last night. That was Boko, my twin. And I, Gorko, am here to avenge them. Are you stronger than Borko? Well, we're twins, so not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He's already on the same page as you. It's just that we beat Borko pretty easily, so I don't think you could have much of a chance. Not to mention, I feel really guilty about that. If I could take that back, I would. I, th I think what Chris Bowell is saying is, can we just be friends? Life's too short for making enemies. I suppose we don't really need to fight. It's just that I've got these pointy teeth and claws. All the better for enjoying tasty foods. Surely you like to eat, don't we all? Of course I do. Oh, inspiration strikes you, and you come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this! You toss a biscuit into Gorko's open mouth, and he devours it in one gulp. Delicious. You're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today. I don't believe it. You were human once. Well, no. I was a chihuahua, but I was still a student at this school. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A uh, magic spell book? Precisely. Borko used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No. You should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Chris Bell, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure, if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. <laughs> it's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy, both perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him, or keep it a secret just for you? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> if I reveal it and he was to take it, I would be honoured, and then he would forever remember me as the person who made the wicked side dish with the crispy, spicy um, creation that he's got. So, I'm gonna reveal it. Let's be, let's be uh, honest. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. Oh, ma magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw. <laughs> until, until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? 
I'd like to have it around so I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him some more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in a moment. You realize now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the Colonel. Ugh! You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on and he wants you to taste it. You can try to act casual, until he asks you, why are you wearing his jacket? Oh, uh, I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off! Oh, oh, do we, do we make the big move? Oh, is it time? But I might creep him out and then he might not share the dish. Maybe, maybe fess up. I was just snooping around. Oh, I was just snooping around. Play it safe. He likes, he likes my honesty. <laughs> you confess. Uh, uh, I, th I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too. But I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Crisp Owl. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. You bastard! Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Oh, take him down a peg. Oh, can we joke around with him? Are we, are we do we have that relationship? Or do we just... Do we just flatter him? Do we just kiss ass? Um, oh, I'm so tempted to take down a... Nah, hell yeah. Let's do it. Let's take him down a peg. Oh, yes. Yes. It's good, but my mum made better. Colonel Sanders' expression grows serious. Did your little jab land too hard? Colonel, I'm... I know what you're going to say. I need to be better if I'm going to leave my mark on this world. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? Oh, it's happening all so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. 
There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night! Ooh! I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up the speed of the saga that is Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! <gasps> a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Wow! Of course I told him, you better keep your dolls turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. Yikes. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. <sighs> Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. But things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. <laughs> now, I'm not really sure where we stand. Oh, no. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam, offer, okay. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. <laughs> What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. You can get your swirly dip too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because mm. I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ugh. You've got some nerve, Chris Powell, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking with that. Might as well give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Chris Bow, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Hmm. But what about the flavour of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? <gasps> oh boy! It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. <laughs> That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Chris Bow. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. Uh -huh. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel? I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Chris Bow. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Well, what's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? 
Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend such a time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it will probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. What do I do? No, we need to focus. We're here to learn. No, that's a lame answer. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, no. No, we can't. We can't do something so stupid. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. <clears throat> I want you all to know, I've been feeling something of a dog moment coming on. But I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up, and he begins to breathe quickly. Oh. Dog ate my homework. Or... Now nah, let's give him a homework. Let's do the dog ate my homework meme. Uh oh! Oh no, he's angry! You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. <clears throat> I apologize for that outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My, my, Crisp Owl. Were you studying something with cinnamon? I have been sitting on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Chris Bauer, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and spars coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Oh no, they're having a row. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane? Strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off in front of your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan. JJ forever! What just form a triangle in midair as we descend? Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well that doesn't make it a great date! Then take Jeff and Joe with you! You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care! Ooh, spicy! Is that a sad beep? How do you do a sad beep? Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud bing stops him in his tracks. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank! Yikes! Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where that came from. In terms of deep friend footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam! Trademark. <laughs> I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. 
But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful song nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay! I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor! Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up with Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Chris Bowles' famous chicken pot pie. Actually, that sounds really good. <laughs> After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Chris Bell, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just <sighs> taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly lifting the space around you. Hmm. Visualising, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry. But the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But the decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you. Oh, right. Well, um... No, I'm not gonna burn it. You will not distract me! Thought! Okay, okay. You got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but... You'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But... It'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. <gasps> ah! The moment of truth. Wow. Oh. Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking. And I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. 
you step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has got her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, registered fried chicken. The intensity of the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, bastard blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Fine time for a point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity, as was foretold. <gasps> we mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. Now this. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has a spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic? Even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Um. Um. Oh, it's tempting. Look, it's tempting to go down the evil route, but let's go for the good ending. Let's go for the good ending. If there is a good ending, I don't even know what ending. Maybe there's an evil ending. We'll have to find out later. Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Chris Bow. Miriam notices too. Always believed in you, Chris Bell, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, bless you, Miriam. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. What? into my noodles. Aren't I making mac and cheese? <laughs> oh, okay. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begins to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the spoke. <laughs> it is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. S Steve? Wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I, I, I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Ha! Ha ha! Ha! Yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you were here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, 
but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I, I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during Scare Tactics class. And when I woke up... You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win! Let's summon extra power from deep down within yourself! Here! I can do this! I have what it takes! I came here to win! Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body! My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yeah. Yes, Chris Powell, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery! You begin to levitate off of the ground, energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything! Except turn back time, which would be super useful, because while you are powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear crisp owl, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What, what about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. <laughs> what a guy. Absolutely, what a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students! With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank, from off screen. You hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad! <laughs> it looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can feel my legs! May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history. But it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia. But there is none. Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students! <laughs> Please collect your final projects. Yes. It has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, time, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. A 
I've made tender udon noodles in savory soup. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. That is so cute. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narutomaki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea I made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus! Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a big hug. Thank you, Grisbell, for helping me to believe in myself. That's okay, girl. I got your back. Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made... Only of a smooth egg custard in an axe hum urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different coloured type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? Uh, uh, that's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Uh, doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to pour it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Please be gentle with my cuisine. <laughs> Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. <laughs> Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount slimplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me! Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student! Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made... Orange Blossom Turkish Delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. Actually, that was pretty cool. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it is quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Chris Bow? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realise that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Uh, I suppose you could smell it, if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard, you might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified! Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. Ah! You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best. But this time, without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. 
This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, well, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just where I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen. Give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive that even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed, everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cosy. DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? <laughs> Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villain. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, uh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Uh, sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see a perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A, 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 a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Ah, oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing in the school, not to mention the honour of educating the son of the Chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? Don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. 
I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? The, the end? Nah, 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 I can't end like that. What a stupid ending. Surely, surely not. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Chris Bow, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Uh, off the top of my head, uh, I don't know. A spicy mask, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. <sighs> ah! Oh, it's finally happening. <laughs> it truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off, and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Chris Bow. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Oh, no! <laughs> ah, okay, cringe level 100. <laughs> Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love? The life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Chris Bow, I'm sure that you will find your place eventually. And along the way, you have me by your side. The end. <laughs> ah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the KFC Dating Simulator game. I I hope you enjoyed it. I um I'm still cringing from all the different voiceovers that I had to do in this game, but it was it was more a visual novel than an actual game, but it was still fun to do all the voices nevertheless. Uh, leave a like and subscribe for more future content and hopefully I'll be seeing you guys soon with more solid content. <laughs> anyway, this is Crisp Owl signing out.